Yeah, don't worry about Ramona. Just put him up high. Put him up, yeah, higher. Good. Hey. Grab it. Grab it. Huh? Gravity makes things fall. Well, where do they fall? They fall down. Oh. Towards the center of the Earth. Gravity. It fell, didn't it? So, the Earth causes gravity, right? Well, yes, gravity. Oh, come on. Come on. Everything that has mass has gravity. Gravity. But the Earth has so much mass that the gravity produced by everything else is like nothing. I mean, forget about it. But let's say I was in space with uh, with this chicken. I would have gravity, and I could exert a gravitational force on this chicken. And if I get my angles right, I might be able to get the chicken to orbit me, like like a moon. Behold, my chicken moon, huh? Gravity. But let's get serious. What causes gravity? We don't know. Ah! But what we do know is that without gravity, there would be no universe as we know it. No you, no me, no chicken moon. I'd miss my chicken moon. Chicken moon, you what? Gravity. Like it or not, the universe wouldn't exist without it. You like the sign? I'll give you a good deal. Uh, half off. Max Historica. If you've ever seen a compass, you know that the needle points north. That's because a compass needle is a magnet and it points towards the Earth's magnetic north pole. And I'm using this compass to try to get to the north pole. But it isn't easy. In fact, scientists knew there was such a thing as the North Pole as far back as the 16th century, but no one was able to actually get there on foot until 1927. You'd think it wouldn't be that hard, right? I mean, the needle points you straight there. Just follow the needle, right? But now that I'm here, I realize it's really difficult. I mean, the wind is incredible, and the snow is intense, and, and it's so cold. My hands are my... Hands, um, yeah. So, okay, we're not really at the North Pole. We were just sort of recreating uh, that. Um, but still, I salute the brave explorers who tried to make it there in the name of science. And I got a sense of it because the, the, the wind from the fan and the, and the, fake, the fake snow was, um, okay, everybody, let's pack it up. I mean, that was, that was, that was pretty good. I just didn't know about that other, about that other camera. Okay, now that's too far left. I don't know what you think. Oh, hey, I don't suppose you're going on vacation anytime soon. Well, if you haven't decided where, may I suggest underwater. But don't forget to pack the most important thing when you go. Hat, nah. Ukulele, nah, forget about it. Oh, chicken, no. Sunscreen, forget about it. Teddy. No, if you're going underwater, the most important thing you gotta pack is air. Hmm? You see, human beings have been coming up with ways to go underwater for a long time. But the thing is, you gotta bring air with you because, you know, breathing is, is good. <gasps> Check this out. It's a diving bell! One of the first ways humans used to be able to take air with them when they went underwater. You see, it's a big heavy bell and it's lowered from a ship above on a rope. And when it gets lowered into the water, it traps a bubble of air underneath. So you can swim around underwater, but then when you need to breathe again, you don't have to go all the way back up. You just pop under the bell and take another breath. <sighs> Bells like this were actually much bigger when they used to use them for diving to hold more air. Huh? Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. What do you think? You want this? No? Uh, it's okay. I got something else. Hold on. Check this out. 
It's an old timey diving suit. Air is pumped in through these hoses here, which means the diver has a constant supply of air, which means he can stay underwater longer. What do you think? Are you, like, no? Okay, hold, hold on, I got something else, I got something else. Uh, um, uh, yeah. This is it, the ultimate in bringing air with you. The scuba suit, this tank holds compressed air, which means it can carry a lot of air with you, which means you can stay underwater for longer. So I'll tell you what, I'll wrap up all three things. What do you say? Yeah, you'll take them? Okay, great. Let me just wrap them up for you. Come on, Teddy, let's go find the bag. Anthony and I are maxing out the spool racer. We start with a long coil of bungee cord, which is kind of like a giant elastic, and feed it through the spool. Then we put on a big piece of plastic to act as our washer and use a long pole as the pencil. We flip the spool on its side to wind it up. Then we flip it back and it's ready to go. All right, so we have it all wound up and we're ready to try it again, but with one change. Uh, Phil. Yeah, what's with the trike? I ride the trike. It's like I always say, what's the point of building something big if I can't ride it? There's no way you're gonna fit on this thing. No, no, I don't I don't put my feet on the pedals. I put my feet here on the back, right? And okay, then, yeah, I get it, I get it. You got it? Uh, hold, hold on, I gotta do my helmet up. Safety first. You ready? I'm on it. Okay, three, two, one, go. Oh, it's working. It's working. <laughs> Amazing. All the stored energy in the bungee cord is being released and the spool starts to turn. There's even enough energy that I can get pulled along behind it. It's not going that fast, no, though. And it's, it's pretty good, though. It still pulls me. Right? Yeah, pretty good. So, Spool Racer actually able to get pulled by it. Yeah. You know what? I think we can go even bigger. Bigger? Yes. Well, what did you have in mind? I'm glad you asked. Uh, oh, oh, yeah! You, what is this? What this is an industrial cable spool, and this is the biggest size that they make. <laughs> and I thought we would do the same thing with this. What do you think? I think this could generate a huge amount of energy. Okay, so all we gotta do is just build it just like we built that other one. Just bigger. Except way bigger. Let's do it. <laughs> when you set a domino on its end, you're giving it potential energy because it can fall. Ooh, and when you put two dominoes together, you can start a chain reaction, because that one will fall into that one. Ah, but it's a lot more fun with more dominoes. Setting up a run of dominoes is a lot of fun, but it takes a flat surface and a steady hand. And if you want to do it yourself, add gaps, so if one part falls, it doesn't take out the whole run. Last one. There, I had some dominoes left, but I did it. I made the Science Max logo. See, Science right? Max. Sort of. Let's see how it works. Ready? Yeah! <laughs> now it's time to max it out. Being a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Buster Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Ah. Oh, hello! Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Beaker. Whenever friends come over, I like to make my famous potato chip recipe. And look at this bag of potato chips. Quite large, there must be a lot of potato chips in here, right? Well, let's open it. What? This potato chip bag is mostly air. Why do potato chip bags have so much air? Well, to tell you the answer to that, I have to tell you the story of two bags of potato chips. Here they are. This one full of air. And this bag of potato chips, there's not much air in it at all. Why don't they make them like this? Well, let's find out. First thing that happens is the potato chip bags come off the conveyor belt at the potato chip factory where they get packed into a crate. Here's a crate here. So let's really stuff them in. And then the crate gets boxed up and shipped off to the store. Oh, it's a bumpy ride to the store today. Now we're at the store. And then you come along. Ah, bags of potato chips 
What else should I buy today? Oh, I know. How about a cantaloupe? Very nice. Some apples, yes? And take it home, walk along, and you get to the kitchen, you have a choice. This bag of potato chips, where all the potato chips are light and fluffy, or this bag of potato chips, which is not exciting at all. And that's why potato chip bags have so much air, to protect the potato chips from getting crushed. Speaking of potato chips, time to get back to my recipe. What is it? It's potato chip soup. Well, hi, Buster Beaker, and thanks for joining me on Cooking with Science. Perhaps a little bit more cooking. <laughs>